I said that the two possibilities coming off of this was a recession and a depression. I said a recession is a financial event. It is a system in which the value of money fluctuates and which is really managed within the banking system. It is not so long-term. A depression occurs when the physical system of production and distribution break down. And they're much harder to fix. You can't just throw money at the problem. The th problem is mechanical and difficult. Well, we evaded the entirety of a depression after COVID. We did have supply chain breakdowns, but they did not result in massive displacement of food or things like that. They were hard, but the point. The war in Ukraine has been different, okay? Because we have two wars going on. The fighting in Ukraine, which I am beginning to think is less important than the economic war against Russia. The economic war against Russia has created worldwide instability in many markets, but also commodity markets. And it's that war, I suspect, that's going to, in the end, decide what happens. If it's successful, the Russians will have to, in some way, capitulate. If it's unsuccessful, Russians have room to fight. And that will, in turn, have a great deal of effect on what happens in Ukraine. That at least is what I'm beginning to think about. In the meantime, what we have to understand is that there's a double blow here. One was COVID, and then the second was the war and the way the US decided to fight that war as an economic war. And as such, we're seeing a double hit. And somehow we're seeing the destruction of the system of production and consumption, and it begins to be a wonder whether or not that is merely a temporary intrusion or a genuine breakdown that will take quite a while to fix. Difference between a recession and a depression. Uh, we've not been in quite a while in this situation where commodities were uh, rare. My definition of depression uh, right now is pretty much a restructuring of what we had before. Um, and it is basically because we cannot calculate the risk, which we normally can uh, during a recession. And we normally can see the many uh, pieces of the puzzle uh, that I'm calling it an entry into a depression, sorry, a depression, just because uh, we don't have another name to call it. I would call it a restructuring. Now, how much time? I'd like to, to actually share a map that has a lot to do with, um, with food as well um, and migration. So this is one of my favorites because it, it pretty much shows where uh, food is produced. So the, the weird mauve lilac um, shade that you're seeing is um, agricultural land. The brown uh, is pretty much land that can be converted into agricultural land. Now you can understand which countries are going to be better off. The US has no problem because the agricultural land is also on the main supply line, which is the Mississippi River line um, that pretty much covers uh, the most of the um, American population. Now, the problem is that for the rest of the world that is not in an area where crops are being produced, um, you're pretty much going to see civil unrest and um, a grow into a migration tendency towards the developed world. So Africa, it's already started. Um, it's pretty much a matter of months where we are going to see data that is going to be very worrying. 
Um, and uh, in Europe, we are already uh, talking about a new refugee wave that is not going to be very uh, nice this time, uh, this time around, because we are also dealing with the Ukrainian refugee wave. So it is geography, ultimately, and the way that countries are tied together that um, will drive um, the, the, the timing of this. Um, another note, I, I no longer have the, the map shared, uh, but okay, just a minute. One, well, a second. Another note, um, check out China. I mean, uh, China is one of the world's producer of food and still does not uh, produce as much as it consumes. Now, if you look at the geography of China, you can understand why. 